Hi everybody, we're going to take a look at parasitic personalities. So there's energy parasites, so there's consciousness in the energy world and I don't really like to define it as consciousness because it's kind of mindless, these types of energy parasites. And they're attracted to frequencies. So they consume the frequencies and they just kind of latch on and that's what they do. They're like leeches, all right? But we have energy parasites, human beings that have parasitic personalities. And I'm really curious to see, you know, I know what the, this is all about here on the energy side of things, energy parasites, but what about human parasites? What is that exactly? What creates that? How do we face those types of personalities? Can those personalities be healed? Can they become self-aware? Um, so I'm going to work with my higher self here and we're going to gain some perspective and learn some things today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and relax and, and we'll see what we can discover about this. All right. Energy parasites. What is then the human parasitic personality? Okay. The first thing I experience, I'm inside a piece of wood. And I can, I mean, how do I want to put this? There's sawdust, but it's rough. Um, and it's not going to splinter me or anything, but I'm kind of stuck inside here. And I can tell it smells like wood even. And it looks fresh. It looks like clean, fresh, healthy wood. But I'm just in a little tiny hole inside. And um, the experience of this is shifting. And I'm starting to become merged with the wood itself. And it's very uncomfortable. I'm actually having to figure out how to grow into the grains of the wood. And it's very unhealthy. To live in a small little hole inside of uh, this plank of wood, that still doesn't look quite balanced. But now to somehow merge with the wood itself, to live or exist within the wood itself, is quite a stretch. Huh. I have to... I have to become not myself is the first message. So an idea before we go further, and they're not t explaining a whole lot more just yet, but what if a parasitic personality is to alter us to become not ourselves, to try to merge or mold into something that doesn't make sense? But this then, to become not ourself, helps us to understand who we actually are. So parasitic personalities give us that gift. Just an idea. Let's keep watching and see what happens next. All right, this is the hard part. I mean, it seemed to be the hard part when I had to merge with the wood. It's getting harder. I start to experience myself separating from myself um, in lots and lots of particles. Like my skin is stretching until it rips and breaks into like millions and millions and millions and millions of particles of myself. And I'm still trapped in this plank of wood. I don't have a face. I don't have anything. I'm just made up of lots of stretched thin particles that have ripped now. So my consciousness is this. I can feel defeat here. I can feel exhaustion, complete and utter exhaustion. I feel like I don't want to be myself anymore. I feel like I don't even know who I am. I don't know how to regroup and start over again because I've lost myself, my own identity. Because I allowed myself to become molded and shaped into something that I am not.
this is sort of the the state of defeat here. This experience is like the ultimate defeat and then loss of self, loss of identity. N no clue how to go on from here. Can a parasitic personality make you feel this way? When you are in a relationship with somebody like this, where you've had to um, try to work with someone that you love that happens to be parasitic, and you mold and shape yourself in order to create some idea of balance while you're losing balance with your own self. And as you continue to lose balance with yourself, you get stretched thin in many different ways until you separate from your own identity. And you become so exhausted because parasites consume, they consume, they take. There's no such thing as balance in a parasitic relationship that now what is left of you but pieces and they and it's like how do you regroup exactly all right this is the next scene there's this frequency wave and it's it's loud and it attracts um all right, so let's say we have this parasitic human being and then we have a human being that is that is a balanced, harmonious type of person who wants to help others, okay? Let's just say. Parasitic person says, ooh, you can help me. You can help me now. Now you go down this road with the parasitic personality who you actually happen to be a soulmate with and you love and you want to help. But all it's doing is just withering you away. All right, the, the next thing I'm being shown is the parasitic personality is there's this odd frequency and it drowns out the sound of everyone and everything. And you can hear yourself and you can hear the parasitic person, but you can't seem to hear anything else. And you kind of are lost in the sound as well, so you're a bit drowned out on what you really are about anymore. You're about helping, helping, helping the parasitic person who is taking, taking, taking. And then where's the frequency? What's this frequency now? What is you separate from what is parasitic personality? So there's a weird frequency sound right now. All right. I'm going to pause for a moment. There's something I've been noticing the entire time I've been doing this journey. And that's the feeling of um, a numbness. As though there's a reality here, but there's also no reality here. There is looking at an experience. The experience then is had. The experience is like this. But then when looking into it from outside, it feels numb. And if it feels numb, then there's no feelings to it at all. If there's no feelings to it, then it doesn't really exist. It's what it's like. So I've been asking my higher self about why is the scene like this? Why is it expressing itself like this? And my higher self says you can either be in, um, it's like caught in the jar. You can either be caught in this web or you could be on the outside of this web hmm and i say but if you're caught in the web how do you get out of the web <laughs> so that you can even be standing outside and then looking from the outside in like what does this mean exactly what are you trying to say here Okay, this is the next hard part. This is so interesting. It's almost like a parasitic personality, it's almost like um, has tiny little stingers, so small and so thin, you wouldn't even notice this was happening. But it seems like this personality has a way of uh, numbing you um, thousands, millions of times. 
um, over the course of the relationship to the point that you can't really feel anymore. You can't really feel. There's something about this numbing um, ability. It's literally like being in a relationship with a spider that's outsmarting you, that's slowly working you into its web. And then even injecting you with this numbing, energetic numbing tool. <laughs> and you just become docile and then consumable. It's very scary, actually. It's very sad. And she shows me that part of the soul can look from the outside in. That once it's trapped in that relationship, it's hard to get out of it. And what is looking from the outside in at this numbing situation is the soul. Is that part of the soul that's trying to figure out what's going on here? Why am I like this? What has happened to me? Um, is there, is this an unbalanced relationship? And on and on and on and on, trying to justify, trying to do the right thing, trying to say the right thing, trying to be polite, trying to stay um, true to themselves, while they're being com completely and utterly turned into a docile, exhausted, um, consumed and defeated human being. And I asked my higher self, is this does this fragment the soul? Is there a point where the soul just fragments? Or is this just simply you become an observer of yourself and you even get kind of lost in trying to alter your position or situation? So you're just sort of stuck looking through the window at you. She says this is also part of the parasitic personality. And this also part of what happens. I mean, she's saying that this is really nor that my higher self is saying this is like, this is what happens. It's not necessarily saying this is a fragment. It's part of the process of becoming defeated. Now you're in the web of the spider, um, looking at yourself in, but feeling completely unable to, to get out of this. You're completely just stuck. You're controlled. It feels as though there's really no way out is kind of what it's like. I'm quite certain there's a lot of people who who have been in a relationship like this and who have felt completely like they don't have any power left. They don't have any ability to get out of this. All right, the next scene is, there's many layers going on here. So here we have what would be defined as um, the one that's being consumed by the parasitic personality in the web, completely just neutralized, not moving, defeated. Then the next layer is their consciousness looking in at their experience and trying to make sense of um, what is going on here? What is happening? Why is it like this? On and on and on. How do I overcome this? I mean, people ha have children with parasitic people. Like, people have lives with them. Like, um, this could be years of time trying to unravel this, trying to turn it around, you know? Now, on the outside of this, l this layer, you have yet another layer of screaming people pounding and pounding on this, um, like this glass, you can't hear them on the inside of it. And so you have this layer, here's yourself looking in at yourself, and then here's the center where this life force energy is being depleted. And you have all these people screaming in, trying to get your attention, trying to help you, trying to get you out of this, and you can't hear them. You can't receive them, and they can't reach you, and you can't be reached by them. These could be friends and family members trying to get you out of this, trying to be heard by you, trying to help you, but you are, like have muted them. And that seems to be this frequency as well that gets um, started here 
with this parasitic uh, relationship, it, there's this weird frequency that, that blocks you away from people like friends and family and this keeps you focused on the relationship focused on this person here and they're all you hear and all you see um and this is your time now to be the generous most wonderful you to um, create so much joy here and maybe it works right but all it's doing is taking and taking and taking and taking and taking and taking and taking until you're neutralized till you're exhausted and you're trying to understand where what is going on here. Why is it like this? I'm seeing these things. How do I get them to understand? How do I get them to hear me? How do I get them, you know? And, but then all the while you have all these people back here. It's like, hello, hello, we're trying to help you. This is what it's like. Gosh, this is really painful. I'm seeing it yet from another level. So now I'm above looking down at these layers, all right, of experiences. And it looks like the most horrifying sore, like a boil on the skin. And it's so um, painful. It's just so ridiculously painful. And it also looks like a bullseye. So then I'm looking down from above. Um, I see here, it's like... Um, if you're gonna shoot a bow and arrow, you know, at that at that bullseye, I think there's like there's this red circle and then there's white, you know, and then a red, and it, like you had these different layers. So I'm looking down and it's like that. Here's the people, here's your soul looking at yourself, here's yourself in the spider web. And then in the center of all this is a horrible, painful, like boil is what it looks like. A big red, horribly painful thing coming out of skin. And it develops on the heart. And it develops in the ears and in the mind too. And it's a sickness. And it's pain as well. Energy pain. And it's sadness and grief and confusion and hurt by somebody you love who happens to be like this and you get lost then in this now too and I tell my higher self it just seems like an attachment then like this person who's in the parasitic relationship becomes then attached to the parasite attached to the confusion, attached to um, the experience, attached to how do they detach from it? How do they, they stop all of this? How do they get it to just simply stop? <sighs> this is complicated. There's reasons why souls choose to have these types of relationships and there's benefits to them as human beings we see it and we're disgusted by it and those human beings are terrible rotten people but there's very valuable reasons why souls explore relationships like this and there's different inspirations along this type of relationship sometimes it happens super quick and you get out before it gets really bad and sometimes there's a very long period of time where you work through this where you're patient where you're giving where you're believing and where you're loving and supporting somebody who just keeps consuming more of all that you are to the point where you just say I love myself enough and I'm feeling dead enough and not heard enough that I can't keep doing this anymore. So there's some point when the soul just chooses to bring the energy back to itself. Instead of giving the energy to another, it chooses to give the energy back to itself. And she shows me, my higher self shows me this can happen. Um, you know, it's like the one that happens right away, it's like, 
they see that there's something definitely not right here and I'm done. I'm getting out of this now sooner than later. And then like 15 years in, let's say, it's just such an exhausted and defeated thing. It can happen 30 years in. It can happen, I mean, it could be a lifetime with somebody like this where you just can't even function anymore. You just kind of wasted away um, your whole life with a person like this, who then is, it's almost like putting you down for not having more energy to give to them. And so you're not good enough anymore. And now that becomes a parasitic thing as degrading you for not giving them more. And it becomes your fault and not their fault. It's very, very psychologically and energetically messed up. <laughs> All right, let's keep looking at this here. She, she says, my higher self says, part, oh, okay, so what's the best way to put it? Let, let's just say the part of you, if you're in a relationship like this, looking in and trying to make sense of, trying to put the pieces of the, together, um, giving your partner the benefit of the doubt sort of thing, um, overanalyzing even, that you can ask for help too in your life and say, and sometimes give yourself some credit here and say, I've been true to who I am. I've done everything that I would do out of love for another. And what type of relationship, if I can be like this, don't I want a partner that could be like this for me, for instance? And to start giving the love back to you and the support back to yourself, you have to start somewhere and it could be a very small step like this. Finding the ability to give a little bit of love and a little bit of support back to you. And if giving back to yourself creates a disruption in the relationship, that's you actually getting yourself out of the web. The disruption is trying to put you back into it, trying to put you down, trying to make you feel guilty, trying to put words into your mouth. That's also a sign. This is hard. This is so ridiculously hard. This was such a hard relationship to be in because even when you start to wiggle out, what comes um, back to bite you can be extremely convincing to put you back in and make you feel guilty, which is now you giving the energy back to the spider, to the parasite, because you were giving the energy to yourself, because you started to choose to love yourself and to give yourself some credit here. But then no, you don't get to give yourself credit here for anything because you're not doing enough for me. So now it's, you're creating the disruption, the disruption is felt, and then you're stung really hard for it. And then when that happens, you feel guilty and you start to give the energy back and then it puts you right back into the web again. And uh, my higher self now is showing me this layer of people screaming on the outside. You'll start to see some of them disappear because uh, friends and family, they get worn out from these types of relationships too. And so the support could even get thinner and quieter There's so much numbing, so much numbing energy used in these relationships. And there's this, this underlying pain. It's like the worst boil. It's so ridiculously painful. And even that is numbed out, substantially numbed out. So it can't, the, the ultimate pain can't exactly be felt. How truly in pain a person in this type of relationship is giving, giving, giving is in extraordinary pain that so much has been numbed out that they can't really tell for sure. They aren't really sure. 
And even if they're getting advice that's really justifying the way that they're feeling too, they still keep going back to the parasites. Super manipulative. I'm still looking for a solution here, like a snap of the fingers, disconnect the energy, I'm back to myself again kind of thing, you know, rising above it, bringing the power back, right? So is there, is there some way to alter the frequency here? Is there some way? And if this takes us back to souls choose these relationships for a reason, the human wants to save itself. The soul is okay being in, you know, in the pot <laughs> of pain, okay? Because the only way for the soul to grow and expand is to go through trauma and challenge and difficulty and then rebirth itself over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then you get really extraordinary souls. Super deep, super expanded, super infinite. All souls are. But there are definitely souls and consciousness that you can meet that you're like, whoa, I could look in here to your infinite self and I'm just like, wow. Some souls are like this. <laughs> Some souls are simpler, but that doesn't make them less beautiful, okay? All right, so how do we just phew, alter the frequency pattern? Bring the power back. This is really complicated again feels very sad. It feels like ending one's own life. It feels like never being good enough, never being enough for someone who was just a parasite and putting yourself down for not being enough for someone who will never, will never have enough of you. It's like an empty void that can never be filled. This is really strange, but it's almost like somehow the soul has a movement inside itself and it says I'll never be enough for that other soul. And am, am I okay with that? Am I okay with not being enough for this other soul? Can I still love myself if I will never be enough for that other soul? That literally is the question. Because when love is involved, the soul will go to the ends of the universe for another, even if it's a parasitic soulmate. So that soul has to ask itself if it's okay not being enough for their soulmate. Feeling even like they have failed the relationship. It's how manipulative it can be. I see now this conversation internally with the soul taking place in a silent space where it cannot be heard, where it cannot be tapped into, where it cannot be sensed by the spider. It's completely hushed and completely silent inside of this. This one who's being energetically fed off of. <sighs> Basically the door is closed and it all turns into darkness. And now I'm going to go into the angle of being a parasitic person. Going into the spider and what the inspiration is, what creates this. It's very hard to understand what creates this. It 
it's almost like it's almost like I can't conceive of it. I can't can't access it. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to walk out of everything we've seen thus far because I'm a bit tapped into the energy to such a loud degree that I'm now experiencing myself as this one that has been completely defeated and consumed by a parasitic relationship. And so now I have to completely leave this energy in order to hear, actually hear what is on the other side of it because it's so consuming. It's so consuming. It's like you get swallowed by a worm and are being digested in its stomach. And that's the relationship. And you had no idea that you were swallowed or that you're being slowly digested. And you can't figure out how in the world this happened or how to get out of this now. You're completely trapped. But it's all a mind game. It's all a complete mind game. And there's a lot of frequency poison involved, like um, numbing energies, constantly numbing you and numbing you and getting you to be like docile and just and very manipulative too. It's all about exhausting you too, till you don't have the energy to get out anymore. Can't get out of this because you don't, simply don't have the strength, emotional or mental strength, and you've lost yourself. So I got to disconnect from this in order to feel it differently. Didn't realize how deep in that energy that I went. All right, I'm still getting out of it, okay? I'm still like backing up the truck here. <laughs> That's how deep in this I went. My gosh, I was like totally numbed out. I couldn't even conceive of the parasitic energy because I was so lost in the numbing aspect of it. <sighs> All right, I'm just cutting the cord and I'm walking away from the parasite from that parasitic personality. All right. And I'm pulling all of my parts back together again. And now when I do this, I start to see that this parasitic human being is this big. It's like an inch tall. And the one that is attracted to the parasite knows this, that their soulmate is extremely insecure. And they go with all the love of heaven and all this abundance and all this magic to fill their soulmate up with love, to bring them back to life inside themselves. But this inch tall parasitic human, um, it just sort of like sucks it all in but doesn't actually receive it because their own insecurities get in the way and in a way they don't they're not really understanding because they're so lost inside themselves so how do we help these soulmates that become so insecure that there they resort to these types of behaviors to becoming people like this because the thing is we have to heal the world somehow and we can't persecute the parasitic personalities because they're our soulmates but helping them seems to just deplete us completely and it doesn't really help them at all it just encourages them to continue to be insecure takers so how do we actually help them? Are they helpable? Maybe we just need to band together and turn our backs on the parasites and let the parasites figure it out with each other. <laughs> it's going to be hard for one inch and one inch to start consuming each other when they have nothing to give but their insecurities and their empty voids. I still find this to be very sad.
Okay, my higher self. Okay, um, how do I want to put this? It's, it has to do with once you discover what situation that you're in, whatever you can do to get out, even if it's not going to be understood by your soulmate, and it's not going to be understood, or you're going to be attacked and you're the one that's insane, or you've lost your mind, or however it ends up being, you have to get out. Get out and get some fresh air for as long as you can to start rehabilitating yourself. Once you can do that, you'll be able to see what you've been wanting to see while you were still trapped in the web because you'll be outside the web now with all the other voices that can finally reach you because you're in their realm, you're in their dimensional space so you can hear them, you're out of the web. This will freak the spider out because it's so insecure, it doesn't know what to do without you. And it can be very mean in order to get you to come back because it needs to work on your insecurities. It needs to break you down to make you as insecure as it is to become like it. But you're never going to become like it because you aren't it. You aren't like that. So step one is literally, it's an emergency, get out, whatever you can do to get out, even just get up and just drive as far away from town and spend two weeks in another state, just get a far, and you don't have to explain yourself, you don't have to explain a dang thing. I feel the rehabilitation experience. I feel the energy returning. I feel a need to sleep for a long time and really catch up with the who am I type um, thoughts and feelings and what have I done with my life over the last years with this person and how am I going to get back on my feet. So now you got to start figuring out how to live your life for yourself. And you have to trust in what you're hearing inside. These are all the first steps. It's not about trying to figure out how to help these types of personalities. It's how to help yourself first and foremost. And it's emergency level stuff here. Like it's like life and death extreme to get you get these souls out of the parasitic relationships. Because to live is to be happy and healthy and to be loved and to receive love. And so that is out of balance with what life is actually all about. There's, I'm still not receiving guidance on how to help these types of souls because first we have to help ourselves. <laughs> Does the parasite choose to help themselves? Or they just find somebody who they can manipulate in order to help them? because they don't know how to help themselves. So if they have nobody to help them, now they have to work on themselves the hard way like a lot of other people have already and conquered their insecurities, conquered their vulnerabilities, are still working on themselves because they're okay with that process. The parasite is terrified of that process, doesn't know how to do it alone doesn't live in, it's like lives in some uh, fantasy in a way to justify their own behaviors and then gets other people to believe in their fantasy with them to support their daydreams that aren't even based in reality. So I start to see the one who has separated, to find, who found the strength to just get out, becoming big and big and big and big and, and, and feeling like it's almost like um, has been, has started to breathe for the first time. <laughs> They've been holding their breath for a very long time, now is breathing. And getting lots of oxygen that is clearing the mind and bringing strength back do not feel sorry. 
for the soulmate. You did everything that you could do. You gave everything you could possibly give and then some. It's time to focus on you now. And nothing that is ever said or is ever spoken has anything to do with you. It has everything to do with them. If it is putting you down or violating you in any way emotionally or mentally. It's almost like it is so manipulative you don't, don't even pick up the phone. Because it could become something so that sounds sincere, something that sounds like I'm so sorry, something that sounds like they want to repair the relationship, but it's again the stinger of the spider. Once you discover you're in that type of relationship, you have to get out and you have to get as far away from that person as you can get because you're vulnerable to their nature, to their style because of the soulmate connection. And it's hard because you, you have to let life teach them, but you can't be life for them. You can't be everything for them. You can't pick them up and carry them so they don't have to carry themselves. That's not what our angels or spirit guides do for us. We actually have to go through these experiences. They just help us with our emotions and they help guide us as we endure the tragedies. They don't pick us up and carry us so we don't have to actually experience life and how hard life can be and to work on ourselves. Like they, they don't, they just take away all that responsibility. Our, our angels and our guys are just like, no, you don't have to work on yourself. No, you don't have to go through that horrible um, experience that's going to really help your soul grow and help you see um, in a new way and help you become an amazing teacher to your children and grandchildren and friends later on in life. You know, they don't do that. Spirit guides and angels, they don't do that. And so we can't be doing that for our soulmates here either. We have to be like guides to them. We can't just take them out of their nightmares. This is a really important conversation and now that I've reached the end, it's almost like I went through my own experience. I went through my own like beginning and end and then beyond of this type of a relationship and how easy it is to get lost and to get confused by it and to not be able to hear and not be able to really know your feelings and to be so like completely confused. But what the freedom can be like when you just simply just, you get out as soon as you notice something here, you get out and you get out in whatever weird and extreme and ridiculous way, you just get out. No matter what, you get out. And that's saving yourself and saving your own life. That is giving you air to breathe and a second chance as yourself. I'm going to ask my higher self one more question because I really want to understand this about the soul choosing the, these types of relationships for a reason. Like, what else can we gather about that? She says, love. Love is what it's always all about. And you should love yourself more for trying to help someone that you love to heal someone that you love who got lost in the love they were receiving and didn't know how to love you back in a balanced way and you did your best to love and that soul will remember for all time forever that you tried to help them when they were struggling with their own insecurities and that's you bringing the love back into yourself to love yourself for giving that a try. Being proud of yourself for seeing it all the way through and again loving yourself by the end to get yourself out of it. How do we help them? It's almost like the whole human race has to be reconditioned when it comes to balanced relationships because we're all going through 
so many different ways of working through insecurities. Some of us won't touch our our ch our challenges, our lessons with the 10 foot pole. We'll have somebody else do it for us. And that's just draining them while we're avoiding, 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 avoiding the parasitic personality, avoiding, avoiding their own lessons and putting you in the way and you gladly t doing that for them out of love. But that's not balanced love, is it? You can't seek out a relationship where you just take care of somebody because an adult isn't a baby. An adult is making an ad adult decisions. And if those decisions are falling in your lap, every decision, the bills, the, you know, like every decision of the relationship, every, you know, there's just so much here and you find yourself caught up in doing more than you should. You're going to notice, you're going to notice that's going on. But that's you out of balance. That's you ta feeling like love is so much responsibility while the other just acts like a baby that you have to take care of. That soul has to learn about love and balanced love too. The one that is generously loving. And now the one that is absolutely insecure they have to learn about balanced love too. So in the end, it's just a whole earth full of souls trying to understand balanced love. It's, there needs to be more information on this. There needs to be, and I mean, we need to be educating our kids at young ages about what balanced love is. Unfortunately, it's like, the adults who've already been through their own hells because everybody does here. They can only understand balanced love to such a degree. So you have two parents, hopefully, maybe just one parent and then one parent or however it works. But parents can only do the best that they can understand based on how they process their own upbringing, right? Based on their own understanding of what love is. So that now becomes the teacher of the children who grow up to now become these adults and take on these roles too. But if there could be like a education in the schools about relationships and what healthy relationships actually look like, not from watching your parents, but actually teaching kids what healthy relationships look like, like at a young age, at a young age, like starting in first grade. And that become part of, of the curriculum every year. It's so important that kids are taught this stuff. And that's one way that we can um, conquer this as a collective um, to help our the younger generations start to grow and understand love and choose self-respect self-love and a relationship that loves you the way that you would love another that's balanced that's supportive that is caring that is working through the challenges of life with patience and communication that's a balanced relationship hmm. okay that's so that's the message be curious to see what you guys think about this. I thought it would flow a little easier, but that was, that was hard. That was hard to go into that experience. It's hard to become stretched thin and into a board of wood and find yourself in the spider web completely numb with this weird sound that is drowning out other love, other soulmates. And feeling just lost in that, lost, completely lost in it. And not even realizing how lost in it you are. I mean, that is like the road of this type of relationship. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for finding the uh, way to watch the whole video so that now you're at this part of the video. <laughs> Thank you for watching the whole message and um, joining me in this experience. 
If any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, thank you all, and I uh, hope you have a great day.